Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be tearing down these, the new DJI Goggles 2. Now in this video I'm going to walk you through how to gain access to the goggles and give you a bit of an overlook of how they're put together inside. Just to be clear up front, this is not a complete bored out teardown because the way these goggles are manufactured is I think I'd end up destroying them, completely taking them apart or at least putting them in a position where I would wouldn't be able to use them moving forward. So today we're going to get the cover off, we're going to have a look inside and I'm going to share with you why I think there is no improvement that can be made to the anti-fog system, what is causing the problems with that, but also showing you what DJI has done. Now just before we get into it, if you find this video interesting and you want to support us to keep making content like this and allow us to do almost destructive teardowns because I almost broke these taking these apart, please do consider checking out the links to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. It is only through the support of my Patreons have I been able to buy this drone, but also keep making content like this on the channel. Anyway, let's get on with it. Let's show you how you take them apart and let's take a look at what's actually going on inside. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is take the strap off, which comes off nice and easily on doing the Velcro. Then we're going to pop the antennas off. Now these lift out. They don't twist, so you just want to lift them a little, give them a nice little tug, and you will see that they pop out from above like that, giving them a little bit of a wobble if you need to get them free. Next, we're going to remove the face mask. Now, the face mask simply pops off. If you give it a tug, it will unclip. And again, you can just place that to the side out of the way. Okay, this is Ian from the future here. Now I'm about to show you how to remove the screws and the focus and IPD adjustment knobs. However, just to be clear, you don't actually need to remove these to gain access to the goggles. If you're simply going to get access inside, skip this part of the video. I'm going to leave it in in order because this is the order I actually tore them down in, but I wanted to add this at this point in time because it is not necessary to remove these unless you are going to completely tear the goggles apart. They are very easy to damage and if you damage these, frankly, you're knackered. So I just wanted to put this in now before moving forward. We're going to want to remove our SD card if we've got one in, and we have, so we're going to take that out as well. And then the next thing we're going to want to do is remove the adjustment knobs for the IPD, so this knob down here. Now you can see that one is already missing, and the reason I've done that is I had some trouble with this one, it's already been removed. Now I have created a tool that allows you to actually grip the knob whilst removing it. This is keyed, so what it will do is drop over the top of the nut, and hold it in place and then this will allow you to actually hold it whilst using a hex to remove. Now some words of warning here, these screws are extremely tough and they are extremely soft. So tough to remove, soft as in they will round. I advise applying a very gentle amount of heat with a soldering iron to the top of the screw for a couple of minutes, one to two max, that will help break down the adhesive that's been used, the thread compound, and that should then allow you to undo it. What we're going to do on this one is pop this in. It's actually a hex, so I'm going to use this one for this. Undo it and rotate the screw. And once you've removed this, you need to be very careful because this is a bit of a mechanism with multiple parts in. So I'm just going to flip it over and take it there like that. Now. There are several parts to this, and I'm going to jump in and show you the several parts to this later on in the video, but you do just want to be careful when taking it apart, pushing it out from the wrench. Now, there will be a link to this in the description on Thingiverse, which you can print if you want to get access. Next, we need to remove the screws that hold the plastic casing on. We have one, two, three, four horizontally going into the plastics. We have one, two, three, four here. Worth noting, this screw here is actually protected. It has adhesive over the top of it to obviously show if someone has been in. It's also worth mentioning all of these screws are made of very soft material. They will round if you're not careful, so make sure you're using a good quality or a proper driver. Thank you. 
Okay, that's the four screws removed from the side. So we're going to remove now these three here before moving on to this one that's protected. Okay, so as you can see, the screw is held with this sort of rubbery gunk. So what we're gonna do is just get in there with my tweezers and remove all of this before I get in there then with the screwdriver properly that will allow me to be able to actually remove the screw I'm just scraping along the sides there we go you can see and then hopefully all being well oh I can feel a bite there we go Okay, so at this point, I'm not sure what happens next. All of the screws are removed, so what I'm going to do is have a bit of a play, and I will come back to you once I've figured it out. Okay, so it seems you do need to remove the four screws that also hold the head strap hoop on either side. I've removed the one already, so we're going to remove the others now. And what it appears is this face mask withdraws from the plastics of the goggles, so I've started to unclip it with a plastic pry tool so it doesn't cause any damage. So again, what you seem to be able to do is pry it around and release it. There's an area down here you can get in as well. So again, you can see I've got it out there. There we go. That's released. And... Ta da we have the inside of the goggles okay so i've now come in closer so we can have a proper look in the center we've obviously got our optics now around these are these little rubber covers that keep the dust out of the mechanism and that's what you see from the outside of the goggles looking at the design we have our main pcb along the top here we have a secondary pcb here which has our bind button and our proximity sensor there's another pcb at the top here with a little sort of stick on antenna i'm betting that's wi-fi and bluetooth with the wi-fi antenna located there you can see all of the ufls for the ocusync antennas all four in a row there then on either side we have our speakers one here and one here surprising how large those speakers actually are and then on either side behind the speakers you can see there we've got our USB-C in power with a little board and down there you can see we've got a board which has the little LED display on it now if I just push the optics out to the side you can see in the middle inside the goggles the fan is located vertically right down there at the back now this is all quite interesting because when i look at this i can now see why we're getting the problems with the anti-fogging on this system because there basically isn't an anti-fog mechanism as far as i can see it what appears to be the case is the fan is vertically mounted i'm not exactly sure at this moment in time which way the airflow is going it is either dragging it in from inside the goggles which takes it in from the vents at the bottom here and here forces it up the front and out over the top of the heat sinks and vents here because there is heat sinks under those vents on the top of this board here and here or it is dragging it in via them through throwing it into the chassis of the goggle and then that's exiting via the vents at the front here or via the vents around the lenses. The problem is though, there is no specific duct in here for the anti-fog mechanism. There is no direction for the airflow. It simply seems to be that that back fan moves air around and my bets are, and I need to check this further, is that it's dragging in from the goggles and out over the top rather than in from the top and pushing warm air in, but that remains unknown at this time. What it does mean, though, is we're never going to get great anti-fog performance from these goggles because basically there isn't an anti-fog mechanism. Now, something else interesting I want to show you is we've got the four OcuSync antennas along the top here. We can't see where they go. We know two of them go to these ports. But if I just push the lenses in, you can see on this side that there's some copper foil behind the lenses at the sides. Now that isn't all the way along. If I go there, you can see next to the fan and the back plastic plate that there isn't any. So it is only on this side 
of the lens. And I'm just wondering if that's some self-adhesive antennas for the other two OcuSync ones, which would place them something like here and here, which would make sense, if I'm honest. It would mean that it, that's what's giving you your best performance from the front point of view. I wouldn't say they're directional antennas, but they maybe stick on PCB ones. It's not clear though, I could be wrong on that. There is an antenna up here, which is self-adhesive. It was sort of hanging off actually when I got the goggles apart. Um, I'm not expecting that to be one of them. I think that's probably simply a Wi-Fi antenna. But what is clear looking around in there is that it's not easy to see where the other ones go. One of the cables heads over here and just vanishes. I suppose it could be that they're on the sides, but it, I don't really see that being the case. So if I was a betting man, I would say they're somewhere around here on the front of the goggle, probably something like there. It's probably going to take a full tear down to be able to see where that is, but that does give you an idea of how it looks. Okay, just having had a bit of a closer look, whereas I said about that foil being the antenna, it's not. I think it's actually the cables for the OLED displays. I can't see it, but what it appears to be is it's copper covered, it's stuck to the front of the goggles panel, and as you move this back and forth, it rolls either way at the back. So whereas I thought that was antennas, it clearly isn't. I think that's just the display cables for the OLEDs. Okay, so I've done some more testing with this fan and it definitely vents via these top up here. I've just had it on full pelt, 100% venting out, which means it's dragging air in through the center of the fan, which is what I was expecting. And that means there's basically no anti-fog. That's it, end of. Now, I don't see anything we can do to fix this. I don't see any improvements we can do because the reality is there's just nowhere for the airflow to go. If we pop these little covers back on as well, which cover over the lenses, what you'll also see is when the cover plate goes on, the vent either side, they're basically going to this area here and this area here. There's no channels. There's these little plastic flaps at the back of the speakers, which I think are there to direct the sound forward in the goggles rather than it go backwards. But there just really isn't anywhere for that airflow. You know, you put the mask on and you can see you've got the vent there and the vent there. But that's just here. And this system is going to be dragging in here from that front section of the goggle, which is going to be supplied by the vents down the bottom. I suppose what you could do is block the vents on the bottom, and that would then mean it has to suck air in through these vents at the front here. But that's not really going to give good anti-fog performance. It's just not going to do it. So these goggles are massively compromised in this respect. Hugely, hugely compromised. This is as far though as I intend to tear them down today. I've had a look at going further and I just can't see a path forward. It appears they're manufactured with this centre module with the PCB is screwed to the top of it. The optics are actually screwed to it. You've got the cables then at the front glued or adhesive to the front panel. And I just think if I tear it down any further, I'm going to cause damage. So this is as far as I'm going to go. I know everyone would love to see more on this board. I'm sure someone will do it. For me, I need these goggles working. I'm just not going to be in a position to do that today and still have a product that I'm able to test and use. Overall, I think the packaging is incredible in the sense of I think DJI have done an amazing job of cramming in everything from the V2 into this and more. That has obviously come at the cost of some things and that anti-fog is definitely one of them. But the fact that they've got speakers in you, we've got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, they've clearly been spending a lot of time on the design of these goggles, but it is very much now in the iPhone category of integration than the FPV goggles category of in integration. Looking to even be able to tear it down, there's screws behind the displays, which I can't get to, which seem to hold the two covers together, the black and the gray. So I just don't see a simple way forward. Someone will break them enough that they have to tear them apart. And I'm sure we'll have a proper look at the PCB when that happens. But for here and now today, I hope that's given you an idea of what they're like inside.
Just to show you this um, knob mechanism from the goggles, which is the focus and IPD adjustment, you can see here it's made up of several parts actually. What you've got is this sort of latching mechanism here in the middle. And let me just try and get this out because it isn't particularly easy to take apart. Uh, there it is. You've got, so we've got the screw, which is this quite long and unusual screw. We've got then the main knob, spring, washer, and this latching mechanism. Now the way this all goes together is that goes in there like that the spring and then the washer with the cup side of the washer goes over the top it's easier at this point to actually put the screw in and that's what gives this sort of locking mechanism for the ipd adjustment etc so I just thought I'd show that as a separate. It's not very easy to do. It's also keyed on the end, as you can see there as well. But hopefully that gives you an idea of how it goes together. Okay, so as you've seen, the packaging on these goggles is quite impressive, although the design isn't great in many ways. That anti-fog issue is going to stay there. It's not going to go away. There's no way to improve it with regards to firmware. There's no ducting. And basically, all they're doing is taking air in from the bottom here, and blasting it out here. Yes, it will drag some air in around here, but it's not going to be a lot. Potentially, if you blocked these, it could mean it's going to drag more in through the eye area, but that's not going to solve the problem. We need air blowing over the lenses, not sucking in to remove the fog in. So it is an oversight, in my opinion, by DJI, the way they have designed these goggles, and simply the fogging behavior just isn't good. Now, I could have gone further today and completely torn them down, but there was a risk I'd have damaged them and then be in a position where I couldn't use them. I need these working right now so I can keep making content and keep testing and keep trying and being able to share stuff with you guys. I would love to have been able to rip them apart bare bones and completely put them on the bench, but that is a risk when there isn't spare parts available. And whilst I'm not worried about my ability to take them apart, with the way they're assembled, there is a risk that a cable will get damaged and it will simply be the case that I'm left with a 500 pound, 600 pound, I should say, paperweight. I do apologize, we couldn't go further. I'm sure someone else will. I know we'll get the board images soon enough. We will get more info. We know roughly what's going on in there. What is clear though, is it's not really a set of goggles that you going to be able to do a lot of modifications too. Now, if you have found this video interesting, again, as I said at the start, please do consider checking out my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. I would not have been able to buy this product without the support of my Patreons. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons from me. If you'd like to help us to keep making content like this, please do check it out. It's only through your support are we able to do so. That's it. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you have any questions, put them in there. I will try and answer it too. I hope you found it interesting. Please do give this video a like if you have. Stay safe and I will speak to you soon.